Hi, in this video, we are going to see how to check if a time series is stationary or not. We will be, look at, we'll be looking at some of the statistical tests like KPSS test and ADF test. ADF stands for Augmented Dickey Fuller test to, to test whether a time series is stationary or not. Now, before going there, let's understand what is a stationary time series and a non stationary time series. Now, a stationary time series has property where the mean variance and autocorrelation structure do not change over time. Now, let us look at this particular uh, graph, right? The first one is a stationary time series. Now, in this, if you see, basically, the this is a pretty flat looking series. The entire series is centered around a zero mean, right? And this also seems to be constant. If there is no like known constant change variance over time. The variance have been high and low, but that's fine. But it's not a constant change over time. And there is no periodic seasonality over here. Like we can see some spikes, but this spike is not continuing the entire series. So there is not much seasonality as well. There can be a cyclic nature in the data, but there is no seasonality. Now I will tell why it is important to understand the structure of time series because it's very critical to select the right model that will fit your data. This is the stationary time series. Now if you see below, here you can see basically the, the time series is not constant or centered around a particular value. There is a uh, kind of a decreasing trend in the time series. So there is a trend to this particular time series component. There's a decreasing trend. And that's why like we call this as a non-stationary uh, time series. Now let's kind of get started uh, with, the, with, the, with the statistical test. But uh, what is the purpose of understanding if an, uh, if an time series is stationary or not? Now let, let's talk about different models. Like the very first model is the ARMA model, right? The auto regressive and moving average. The, this model expects your their time series to be stationary. Now, if your time series is not stationary, adds as some trend component to it, then basically you need to go for a ARIMA model. The, the ARIMA model, there is one additional component in the ARIMA model, that is the I. Now, what this high component does is, this high component, this makes your time series stationary out of your non-stationary one. And this procedure is called differentiation. So basically you are taking your time series and differentiating it from the previous time series lag. And that's where ARIMA model comes into play. So if your data is completely stationary, then you can go for ARMA model. If it's non-stationary, you have to think of ARIMA model. And this differentiation that you can do, that can be over one time period or multi-time period. And that is the parameter called D that you uh, set in your ARMA model. Right? It can be one, two. Typically two is what the maximum is, but sometimes it can go above that as well. Now, if your data has seasonality or trend seasonality, then you need to look at a seasonal yes, yes arima model that is seasonal arima model uh, because you need to differentiate it from the seasonal component so that's why it's very important to understand whether your data has an uh, stationarity or not because depending on that the model that you choose will vary right so for this purpose what i'm going to do is i have, I have run an initial few steps so i have imported different packages here matplotlib plotly express to visualize the data and pandas to load the data I am using the Amazon revenue data set, which is there in my GitHub repo over here. I will also mention the link in my YouTube video description below. You can check it out. I'm just using this particular Amazon revenue data set. And this data set has quarterly level data of Amazon revenue. Uh, the actual revenue that it has done from uh, like uh, some 2005 year to 2020 and uh, the net income, right? And once I plot it, this is how the data looks like. Um, well, if you see, I'm using Plotly Express. So the Plotly Express, what I'm doing is I'm feeding quarter as my x-axis, that is a time, and then y-axis is revenue. I'm taking only revenue. I'm not taking net income. If you see over here, this particular time series, the data is increasing from year 2005 till 2020. So there is a trend component to this particular time series. So now here we know the data is non-stationary, but how do we test it? Like one is from visual, we know exactly it's stationary or non-stationary, but we can be wrong as well. So it's better, better to run some statistical test. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run two statistical tests to check whether the time series is stationary or not. I'm going to run the KPSS test and ADF test. So the first one I'm going to do is run the KPSS test. In KPSS test, basically the null hypothesis is thus the time series is stationary. 
and the alternate hypothesis is the time series is not stationary now if you just remember this uh, particular null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis because when we go to adf test it will be completely the other way around right so this is a null hypothesis the, the series is stationary and the alternate hypothesis is the series is not stationary so to run the kpss test what i'm going to do is i'm going to import kpss test from the stats model package that's what i'm doing over here and then i am basically calling the kpss uh, function and i am passing the revenue object from the data frame that i created with the amazon data set and i am passing ct basically ct i am telling that this particular data has a trend component to it because what we saw on the top the the data was increasing over time so there is a trend to comp trend component to it the series was not constant around the mean the mean was shifting towards up like that's why we call trend now this that's why we give ct now if that it does not have a trend it is still around mean then you have to give c so if you click on this kpss you can basically uh, see the different options c is the data is stationary around a constant ct is that the data is stationary around a trend so these are the two values and the output i get is i get the stats which is nothing but the kpss test statistics uh, that's a value that we get and the p value uh, that, that that's going to be for base for our hypothesis testing the lags and the critical value the lags is how much lag did it use uh, you can you can feed your own lags otherwise kpss is going to use the default lag and if you again go to the documentation it will mention how it calculates the lags and the critical values for the uh, for the test right so these are the four values that we are going to get let me run this one and then let me print the test statistics p value and the critical values and what i am doing is if the p value is less than 0.05 then the series is not stationary right so basically what we are doing is we are kind of uh, rejecting the null hypothesis in this case but if it is greater than 0.5 that means the series is stationary so that's what i have printed over here so let me quickly run this and now if you see over here on the visual also we saw the series is not stationary and here also the p value is pretty less less than 0.05 so and the test statistics is 0.17 so if you see the critical values of uh, for like 5% if we take 0.05 that is 5% the critical value is 0.14 since the test statistics is 0.17 we know like we are kind of rejecting the null hypothesis over here we are kind of accepting the all the alternate hypothesis and uh, that this shows basically the uh, the particular time series is not stationary right now what we are going to also try is we are going to try with the adf test so the why do we try with two tests like it sometimes it's good to try and make sure um, both the tests are giving not stationary uh, that there is like some uh, you may have like some iota or doubt because sometimes it may in the border range so it's better to run two tests but uh, even a single test will uh, work as well right so both tests are available you can choose which test you want to do now in this case of adf test the null hypothesis is basically the series possesses a unit rot and hence is not stationary now if you see on the top the null hypothesis was the series is stationary here the null hypothesis is series is not stationary uh, forget the unit root for now i will cover unit root in a separate video uh, because depending on the unit root uh, you may have to apply differentiation as well so i will take it in a separate video but think like null hypothesis is the series is not stationary and the alternate hypothesis the series is stationary it is completely opposite of what we saw in the kpss test so in this case what i am doing is i am again from stat stats model i am importing the uh, ad adam fuller package sorry uh, augmented dicky fuller uh, test package that is the ad fuller and then uh, what i am doing is i am passing the uh, re revenue data frame again and i am getting the result and from the result again it will give me a test statistics p value and critical value this for this particular test that is the 0 1 and 4th index in this particular result object I'm printing it and here what i am telling is if my p value is greater than 0.05 right the earlier it was less than so in if it's greater than 0.05 uh, in that case what i am doing is i am failing to reject the null hypothesis so my series is not stationary else my series is stationary so that's what i am printing right the, let me print the output and here you can see basically our p value is 0.12 that is greater than 0.05 so basically what we are doing is we are failing to reject the null hypothesis and hence our series is not stationary in this case and even if you see the test statistics 
it's minus 2.44 and the 5 percent significant level is point uh, minus 2.92 so it is still less than your 5 percent significance level so in this case in both both, both of this test what we can conclude is this particular series is not stationary and since it's not stationary we can we cannot use the harma model we have to go and use the arima model the, with the i component that is the integrated component in it where we feed the d value uh, that is a, arima has three parameters p d and q p is for your auto regressive uh, d is for your integrator and q is for your moving average we have to feed the d value that is a differentiation parameter and i will talk about differentiation parameter separately uh, but this test is critical to understand what model we can use all right so that's about it in this video uh, one other point i want to add is i said arima but this particular trend has seasonality as well you can see constant peaks during the december quarter so basically we have to use seasonal arima uh, that there should be a seasonality component as well uh, but but uh, in this case uh, i just want to give an intuition how to test for non stationarity thank you very much